Hi guys, welcome to the Geography Academy. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the CAIE AS Geography, uh, specifically the 2019 to 2020 course. And this is just a course overview to basically give you an idea of what you'll be studying this year. So the course is split into two sections. One is physical, one is human. In total, you're gonna to have three units in physical, three units in human. And for each of those units, they have four topics. So this means in total, you will be studying 12 topics in physical geography and 12 in human geography. Those then are the topics that you'll be given in the exams and they're split into two separate papers. One paper is human geography and one paper is physical geography. Because of section one, you do have to study all of these topics. So in the physical section, you have hydrology and fluvial geomorphology, which is similar to the rivers that you studied in IGCSE. You've got atmosphere and weather, and you've got rocks and weathering. So the first section in hydrology and fluvial geomorphology is to look at the drainage basin. This is looking at all the precipitation and the water that goes into a drainage basin. How does it get into the surface store, the groundwater store, the soil store, the vegetation store, and how does it move through those and how they're linked together in terms of stores and movement or flows, I should say. Then you look at river channel processes and landforms. You'll be familiar with a lot of these things. Certainly you'll have studied uh, waterfalls before, uh, meanders before and other geological features. This time it's just a little, a few more extra features and a little bit more detail. For the human impact, then you're gonna have a look at flooding and what causes it and how we can prevent it. And you'll have to look at case studies for that. You'll also have a look at how human beings have impacted the drainage, uh, drainage basin. Um, and you can look at case studies again for that. Like this one here shows the Aral Sea, how the water has been depleted since 1989 to 2008, for example. So we'll just have a look at human's impact on that, which is normal for the physical section. The next section is atmosphere and weather. Now, first you'll look at the diurnal energy budget, which means the difference between the night and the day. So what's happening when the sun is shining? Uh, how are we receiving incoming solar radiation from the sun? And then what happens during the night as we have no sun above us and all that energy is escaping? The global energy budget will then uh, show us a lot of detail about things like how we get our climate zones from dry deserts to dry polar regions and why other areas are full of vegetation like in rainforests. So it's a very, very interesting section. You will have to understand the different systems that are in place in both the atmosphere and in the ocean as well and look at the circulations there, um, such as this, like the three cell model and understand where the pressure belts are and why there's differences between the land and the ocean. This is certainly one of the most difficult areas of the course and where students often look for the most help. With weather processes and phenomena, we'll talk about um, things like thunderstorms and you look into different types of precipitation, why they happen, cloud formation, and basically what happens in the atmosphere on a daily basis. For the human impact then, we'll have a look and see how Building urban areas has led to um, changes. So we have our own special climates on, under urban areas and to study those in depth and see the impact they're having. We'll also look at climate change and we'll see how things like ice sheets retreating, um, we'll see how, like why they're happening, what it indicates to us and ways in which we can help reduce that enhanced uh, greenhouse effect. Moving on to the other section of the course, we have the human geography, and that's split up into three sections, as we mentioned before, population, migration, settlement dynamics. So for population, um, a lot of it at the beginning, you've seen um, most of this before, talking about natural increase, the difference between birth rates and death rates, why there uh, suddenly becomes longer life expectancies and um, how death rates will decrease over time and why birth rates might decrease also, showing a change in the demographic transition model. And we often look at different countries and their levels of development and the population 
is a really great indicator to show that level of development and the stages that they're at. We look at population resource relationships. So in this section, you'll be looking at things like water as a resource and how an overpopulation can lead to a depletion of that resource and how that can lead to conflict over that also. We'll look into the production of food and also study some case studies got to do with um, changing that okay so how has food production increased over time then finally we look at the management of natural increase here you need one particular case study to really really focus on um, so it could be something like China's uh, one-child policy and you'll be just basically looking at uh, pro or anti natalist policies and looking to see if countries are trying to increase or decrease the birth rates then on to migration Migration will look at the, the reasons why people would move and we'll have a look at internal migration first. So that's what happens within a country. Uh, so let's say someone wants to move from a rural area into an urban area or for example someone wants to move from one city to another because possibly there's um, not the right university or there's not as many jobs in that city. So we'll have a look at internal migration and the impacts on the area of the country where people are leaving and the impact on the area that are receiving people. We'll then look at international migration which is of course one of the biggest topics right now um, on the news around the world, incredibly important subject to study. Uh, we'll look at the differences between voluntary migration and forced migration. Um, so obviously forced migration is what makes a lot of the highlights right now on the news. And then we'll have a look at one particular case study of the management of international migration. I do say a lot of the times that you need one case study, but it is of course very, very important to have a grasp on general global patterns of migration as well. And finally, settlement dynamics. Here you'll begin by looking at rural settlements and have a look and see how urbanization has impacted that, why people have been leaving rural areas in developed countries and um, places like LICs or low income countries tend to see um, mass migration out of the rural areas. So we'll have a look then and see how urbanization is impacting uh, many countries around the world and we'll see what the kind of we'll go back and look at the function of a city and see how that's been transitioning um, over the past few decades into modern times and try to look into what will be the next trend in urban areas. You then have to look into the management of urban settlement and here you're going to need two case studies. One case study is based on an LIC or an MIC and looking how they're dealing with some of the issues such as uh, slums or favelas um, informal housing. The other case study will have to look at a HIC, a high income country, and look at issues such as energy resources or um, transport management. Okay, so that will be in your HIC. So that's the human side of the course, the population, the migration and the settlement dynamics. It is quite a broad course and there is a lot more detail to it than let's say in the GCSE. So to get help straight away, I would recommend first going on to the Cambridge International website and going to the Geography Curriculum, uh, course 9696. Scroll down here on its main page and you'll find the Learner's Guide here. So that's a really good uh, document there that can offer you a lot of uh, quality information and is made to be more readable than the full syllabus itself. So I would recommend starting there. Then the next thing I would recommend is for you to go to the Geography Academy, head up to the CAAI Geography course, click AS and get in there and take advantage of our free resources, professional tutoring and our group classes. If you have any ideas on what else we could be talking about in these videos, um, mention it in the comment below along with any questions you might have.